Okay, this lesson is going to be about the boiler and the boiler relief valve and hot water heaters for that matter and why this relief valve keeps dripping on the floor or flooding out the basement or wherever it is. This is the relief valve. Of course, it's a three-quarter pressure relief valve and it's designed to leak water on purpose because boilers are designed to have 12 to 15 pounds of pressure in them. That's the manufacturer, that's what they want. Houses have 50 to 100 pounds of pressure, pounds per square inch PSI, inside the home. So, of course, plumbers install this little gadget called the pressure reducing valve. And it's a simple little invention that 50 pounds of pressure hits the back of the valve from the cold water feed into the boiler, but only lets 12 pounds of pressure out. Once these things fail, 50 pounds of pressure in, and they fail and release more than 12 pounds of pressure out, they can cause this relief valve to release water onto the floor because it doesn't want to let the boiler build pressure. It's dangerous. It could ruin the boiler. It could cause the boiler leak. It could explode if it's high enough to pressure. So they're on every boiler, the relief valves. So the half-inch pressure reducing valve lets 12 pounds in to the boiler and holds it there. If you drain water out of the boiler, it knows that and lets more water back in. Once the boiler's gauge reaches 12 to 15 PSI, this shuts off, even though there's 50 to 100 pounds of PSI pushing on it. It doesn't let more than 12 to 15 in, depending on the adjustment. And there is an adjustment on top where you can go a little higher, a little lower, depending on what you're doing. The other reason the boilers can release water out of the relief valve is the expansion tank that's on the boiler. Now this is on every boiler also because as the water heats up it expands and needs somewhere to go. Instead of dripping out the relief valve it takes the expansion. This is by design. This also comes with air, pressurized air inside this little bicycle valve with 12 to 15 psi in it. And if I check this one you could take a bicycle gauge, a tire gauge and quick check it. And sure enough, it's got 15 PSI in it. When these go bad, the boiler will release pressure out the relief valve also because the water, as it expands, has nowhere to go. And it's a simple test. You'll know when these go bad because if it's dripping water and the flame is on under the boil, the fire is actually on and it's firing, that's when you'll get the water pressure releasing out the, the, this relief valve here. As the boil goes off and the water cools, that will stop. That's how you know it's the expansion tank. So you have the relief valve, the pressure relief valve itself, or the expansion tank, which causes the relief valve to go bad. The other reasons it can go bad, and I'll draw it on the whiteboard for you, is your boiler also sometimes has what's called a domestic hot water coil in it. And what that simply does is it has 12 PSI in the boiler by design, but you have 50 to 100 PSI entering this coil where cold goes in and hot comes out to your shower. This is very high pressure, so everybody could take a nice hot shower and maybe use the kitchen at the same time. Well, these copper coils can develop a pinhole in them sometimes inside the boiler where it can't be seen. Once that takes place, now you have your 50 PSI entering this coil and leaking out of a tiny hole, causing the 12 PSI in the boiler to now climb. And once it climbs to 30, this guy is going to say no good, pressure's too high, and flood out the floor. That's one scenario. The other scenario was besides these coils, you have your boiler, and you have a storage tank standing up next to your boiler. There's no fire in the storage tank because the plumber stole the hot water from the boiler with a circulating pump. And that feeds into the storage tank and back to the boiler again with the flow being this way. It goes in and comes back. This is all 12 PSI in here and in the bottom of this tank. But this tank also has another tank inside it which cold domestic water goes in at 50 psi and hot goes out to your shower 
Again, same scenario. 12 PSI of hot water from the boiler heating up the cold 50 PSI making it warm so you can shower and use your house. Unfortunately, these tanks also fail where you can get a slight leak from the tank that's inside the tank or sometimes it could be a coil depending on design inside where the cold water goes in and gets red hot and comes out hot. Once they spring a leak now you have your 50 PSI or your high pressure water leaking into your boiler water which is all connected through the circulator and into the boiler causing the relief valve to drip because the 12 PSI will climb with that constant cold water feeding the tank. Easy way to check that. The cold water going in, the domestic cold water going in, there's a valve on it. Shut the valve off and kill the high pressure going in. Eventually, after everything equalizes, the relief valve should stop dripping. In that case, that usually happens once these tanks are more than seven years old and um, you have to replace the tank. You don't have a choice. And that will cause the relief valve to stop dripping once the tank is replaced. The other, way, the other problem, or the other scenario, is high temperature. These boilers are designed to pump 180 degree to 190 degree water through your baseboard. It, if the boiler's temperature reaches 200 or 212, which is boiling, it's going to build more pressure than the relief valve can handle, and it's going to, again, release the water. So you also have high temperature that it can release the water. And last but not least... There was one more way that the um, boiler can, can, the relief valve can drip water, and that's where the um, the press, the expansion tank is installed on the boiler. It's hard to show here, but I'll, I'll try to draw it for you. You have your boiler. And you have a zone on the boiler with the circulator pushing, going this way, out into the baseboard. If the expansion tank is tied in anywhere after the circulator, after the pump, after the circulator pump, it'll cause that relief valve to drip water also. That has to be taken out and installed behind the circulator pump anywhere's behind it on the boiler on the system they have to be behind the pump the pump is going that way the expansion tank has to be installed behind it once it's installed in front of it again you're going to get that pressure relief valve leaking water that's another scenario that people don't know about also these expansion tanks again come with 12 to 15 pounds of pressure in them if you're operating your boiler on 20 PSI or 20 pounds of pressure and you're comfortable with that, maybe you have a third story on the house that the water has to get up high, you can take a bicycle pump and pump 20 pounds of pressure in here also. You want to equalize the pressure. If the boiler is operating on 20, put 20 in here. If the boiler is operating on 12, put 12 in here. That'll stop the relief valve from dripping. Same thing with a hot water heater, by the way. They sell these expansion tanks for hot water heaters now, too, because the same relief valve, or a different relief valve, but similar, is on a hot water heater. And they drip also without the expansion tank installed on the plumbing on the hot water heater. Same scenario. Most houses have 50 PSI in them. Some, some um, neighborhoods have more. Could have as much as 100 PSI in them. Check. You can check your PSI easy enough by taking this gauge and screw it onto the outside valve that your hose is connected to. Turn the valve on and boom, it's going to jump right up to 50, 60, or 100. If it goes real high, the tanks for the hot water heaters come with about 45 to 50 in them. But if you have 100 PSI or 90 PSI at your house, take a bicycle pump and pump this up to 90 PSI before it's installed on the heater. You don't want the high pressure water on one side. It'll give you a false reading. Equalize it. With the hot water heater, with the boiler. Same pressure in the air side as your water pressure is, and you'll never have a problem. That's it. One of those scenarios is going to stop your boiler from dripping or your relief valve from dripping. End of class.